So today we're going to be talking about debugging your Adonis application. And first I wanted to point out that there's actually a whole page on this on the Adonis documentation uh, that's honestly going to cover most of what we're going to talk about here today. So definitely be sure to give this a run through as well. So I know that this isn't a Let's Learn uh, lesson, but I'd like to note that within the Let's Learn project, I've gone ahead and commented out all of the signed URLs for this, and we're just rendering out the welcome page for our homepage again for this lesson. So if we jump back to our localhost 3333, we should see something kind of like this. Now, as for the actual debugging here, if we jump into that welcome page, we can utilize an edge global function to really print out anything that we need to using a method called inspect. So here, if we provide just a string, to this inspect, you'll see that we see just that string. Uh, let me go ahead and get rid of the styles here. There we go, that's a little bit better. And you'll see Adonis is actually providing styles specifically for this tag as well. So all I'm doing is calling inspect. I'm not providing any pre-tags or anything like that. Adonis is doing this nice formatting for me. So in addition to just a string, you can do an array. So we could do, let's see an array here with another string in it. We can do an array with another object in it. Uh, we can do an object that's deeply nested. So here we can do an object with test uh, that contains another object with uh, our array, which contains another object with our array, which contains another object with our array. And you get the point here. So we're doing some deep nesting and you can see it prints it out just the same. And it's also in a nice, easy to scan format as well. So this inspect is actually going to print out wherever you call inspect within your edge page. So here we're calling it up at the top. If I move it down to the bottom, now our visual representation that's rendered out on our actual page moved from the top to the bottom as well. So that's going to print out wherever you have it within your page. So if you have it in the partial, it's gonna be wherever that partial is. If you have it within a component, it's gonna be wherever that component is, et cetera. The next way that we're gonna go about debugging is actually using the Chromium node dev tools. In order to actually utilize this, we need to provide an inspect flag that's a node argument. The way that I like to do that is by adding a debug script within my package.json. Okay, so let's add debug, and this will run node ace serve and then we need to pass it a node arg, and we need to escape our string here. We need to pass it the flag inspect. So we can give that a save, stop our server, and let's give this a run. So npm run debug. Okay, and there's one line to note here. So you'll see this debugger listening on WebSocket localhost 9229 with a GUID after it. So if we actually jump into Microsoft Edge, go to your page, and open up the dev tools, you'll see this node icon now right over in the left hand corner of your dev tools. If we go ahead and give this a click, a new dev tools window will open specifically for node. Now to note here, this is specifically for Chromium browsers. So Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, uh, Firefox dev tools does not run on node like Chromium does. So that's why this is a Chromium only feature, at least for right now. But within the connections that are listed here, you can see our localhost 9229. So this is already listening and ready to go. So from here, all that we need to do is add some debugger tags to actually tell it to stop our execution at that debug point. So within our welcome.edge here, let's get rid of our inspect and jump back up to the top of our main here, main element. And just before our H1, Edge also has this nice little at debugger, which whenever Edge is executing our code, it will actually drop a literal debugger tag for us. So the execution will stop right here as it's running through our code. So you might get this blank screen like this. That's okay. Um, that's just whenever it's first opening it up. Uh, you can go ahead and click next. And now you'll see that it actually opens up within the dev tools just as you were looking at the actual source. So you can see on line 33 is our debugger. Uh, you can see that it has all of our escaped HTML listed here. So if I scroll up, you can actually see the doc type, the meta tags, all that stuff. It's valid HTML. It's just we're taking a look at it as though we're viewing it as the Edge template engine for Adonis. So everything is escaped. And if we scroll down, we can actually see the underlying execution. So our at entry point scripts here is actually running state assets manager entry points script tags for app. So you can see the actual literal definition for that. You can see what it's printing out. Uh, and if we scroll down a little bit further within our actual code base here, we can see that we are calling a route function that's 
trying to get the route for app posts show. If we scroll down within our dev tools, we'll see the exact same thing, except we'll see it as the underlying code that Edge is running. So it's actually running template escape state dot route app post show, and it's providing these actual parameters that we're providing the function. So this is a great way to actually step through and see the state that your application's in if you ever come into something that you're not quite sure about or you get an unexpected output, you can use these debugger tags to stop the execution of the code at that exact point and scope it out yourself. So you can see over here within scope, we have a state. This is everything that we have readily available to us within our code, within our edit editable code that is. So we have, you can see the excerpt function, last messages. There's our inspect function right there. We have Pascal case, pluralize. Uh, so a lot of these are global edge functions that we can utilize. Uh, there's our request. So we can actually take a look at the underlying request within here as well. There's our HTTP context. There's our logger, our active params, our profiler, request, response, route. So we can take a look at the route that we're requesting, the meta information for that route, all that fun stuff. So you can dive in here as deep as you need to go and see exactly why something within your application might not be running as you expect it to be. So to give you a breakdown of what we're viewing, uh, the green line is the current line that the code is stopped execution on. So you can see within our browser, we have that infinite kind of loading indicator. That's for our entire server. Whenever we're stopped at a breakpoint like this, our server is fully stopped. So if we actually try to request another instance of a page, uh, that request will not go through and it will just keep spinning up until we end our debugger session. So the way that you do that is you can either step through the execution, view it to its full completion. So we can continue clicking step through and it will just keep going up until the actual code has nothing left to execute for that request. So we have step over to next function. And then we also have just a regular old step. For the most part, both of these are gonna seem like they're doing the exact same thing. Uh, the play button is going to continue the execution of the code up until it reaches either another breakpoint or another debugger keyword. So right now, if we were to push it, it would just finalize out our requests. So here, since we've pushed it, we've completed our first request. So our initial page that we initially sent the request on is finished. However, our second page that we requested while we were debugging actually stopped at the debugger yet again. So one request is done. Now we're at the next in the queue. So essentially, we've just stopped at the next debugger point. Now we can also add breakpoints. So to add a breakpoint, just come over here and click on a line number to add a breakpoint. And so now if we hit the play button again, we'll stop at that breakpoint. So a breakpoint's essentially saying, hey, stop here whenever you reach it. And that's exactly what has happened. To remove it, just click on the red dot. So we've gone over the play button. We've gone over the step buttons. The third button over here is actually step into. So if we wanted to inspect and see what was actually happening for this call block right here, we could step into it and then we could step over it as need be. So you can see we stepped into the global function for route and we're actually seeing it called make URL underneath the hood. And we can see the arguments that are provided to this actual function call. So you can see the route identifier was provided a value of app post show. Params was provided an object of ID with a value of one and can't quite get over the options, but it's over there as well. And that's where this little scope panel comes in as well. So you can see local scope, you can see closure scope and global scope as well. So for the local scope, we have this, which is undefined. We have our options, which we can't quite see via this tooltip right here, but we can dive into it via here. So you can see we have a query scope with test of test. Then we have our params and our route identifier as well. And then if we needed to go and dive out of this function, head back to where we were, we can hit the up arrow, which is step out of the current function. So that's kind of the controls that you have there. Uh, these last two buttons aren't necessarily control related. The first one deactivates your breakpoints. And the second one you can use to toggle on and off whether or not to stop on exceptions. So we'll go ahead and hit continue here. And you can see that our request has now completed and we have our page printing out. So we can go ahead, get rid of this debugger. And instead of using that debugger within an edge template, let's now take a look at it within our controller. So let's go up to our post controller and let's go to our show function. And now since we're in literal JavaScript and not in the edge template engine, in order to drop a debugger tag, instead of using at debugger, we can just do debugger itself. So we'll give this a save. 
Okay, and then we need to go back to our browser and actually request this page. Let's do posts and three. So you can see immediately whenever we requested that, we are now stopped at that debugger point. And now we're within our controller. So you can see we're within our post controller, specifically stopped within our show at line 16. And so we can visually see that we have our params object that we are extracting out of our HTTP context contract is getting a value of ID with a value of three. In addition to that, we can also verify that by looking over at the scope panel. However, we can also hover over params and see that as well. So we can see ID of three and we can do the same down here where we are actually using that ID as well. And then since this is the same debugger, we have all of the same controls. We can see the call stack over here. We can see our watch. We can step into, step over, step out of, continue, all that fun stuff. So that's how you can go about debugging an Adonis application and actually visually stopping the execution of the code and inspecting what something is at an exact point and time. So.